Nigeria as a country was once an agrarian nation, deriving its revenue from agriculture. The discovery of crude oil, however, set back the development of agricultural best practices. Agriculture and the whole value chain lost its pride of place on the development index. The fluctuating nature of crude oil prices, amongst many other issues, has now made many to agree that agricultural development, leading to industrialization, is the way to go if we truly want to be part of the nations of the world considered to be developed. To effectively do this in Ogun State, the administration of Governor Ibikunle Musum made agricultural development and industrialization one of the five cardinal programs of the government. What this means is that, although many aspects of the government need attention, special focus would be paid to this very important sector. In line with this, the first budget of the Administration for Agriculture and Industrial Development in 2012 gulped a total of 8.8 .8 billion Naira. In 2013, the amount was increased to 10.69 billion Naira. From the trend in Ugun, the time for the development of agriculture in the state, and indeed the country, is now. As farmers tend to say, great farmers equals great nation. A Yoruba saying says, Agbe Loba, the farmer is king. The commitment of the present administration to the development of agriculture in Ogun State cannot be overemphasized. The emphasis has always been to help farmers towards development of both themselves and their farm produce. To this effect, the State Ministry of Agriculture has continued to partner with people across the world to see that this goal is achieved. We are working with um, different uh, groups. We're working with our different farmer groups, be it the Umbrella Body All Farmers Association, which is AFAN, Cassava Growers, Rice uh, Farmers Association, Refan, or Tomato and Pepper Growers. Um, and the reason is we are, as, as state government, as we're funding, we are also um, looking to uh, sponsors. We are funding ourselves, but we're also working with donor agencies that we know give money to agriculture. And when they come, they always have focus areas. Uh, I will mention the example of the association called IFAD, the Arab Fund for Agri Development. Their focus areas are rice and cassava. So if we've seen that and they've told us we want to pump money along the value chain of rice and cassava, it behoves on us to make sure that our focus stays on those two. Uh, produce. So, we're, we're following our own initiatives. The reason for the partnership with farmers in the state is for the overall transformation of the agricultural sector. Through this development, many unemployed youths could be gainfully employed, thereby reducing the problems of poverty and subsequently creating wealth. Presently, there are many companies in Ogun State that produce different products. But the challenge being faced by some of these companies is lack of availability of raw materials for production. In the recent past, this constituted a major hiccup in production lines. But since the present administration came into office, this challenge is being systematically tackled. There are a number of rice processing factories who have to go sometimes all the way up north to get their paddies. So we have off tickers. We already promised the farmers, and that's why our responsibility, as you've seen, was to clear, to plow. Um, we brought them in to do the planting. They would tend to the rice, and then when it's time to harvest, we off take their produce from them and pay them directly. Apart from the production of raw materials for industries, agricultural development in the state also aims at food production for both consumption as well as for export. Various food and cash crops have thus been given priority in the state. For example, cocoa farmers in the state have been encouraged with the provision of seedlings for the farms. The state farmlands also have been developed for production through the purchase of land clearing equipment, including tractors, plows and planters. 
One of the state farms receiving attention is the 100-hectare rice enclave at Egua. The land has been cleared by the state government to aid farmers. This is one major challenge that farmers were faced with in the past. Now, a large expanse of land can be cleared in just a short time. The goal is that a rice processing plant would be built so that harvested rice can be processed and bagged in Ogun State. Ultimately, our intention is to explore the entire value chain of rice. That's up to processing and packaging. Um, we will have a factory, maybe closer to the main road where we turned off, just so that that is visible. And it is the rice from here, from this enclave, that will feed that factory. So we will process that rice all the way to packaging, boxed and labeled Ogun State. Uh, for purchasers and then from here we'll move them to different supermarkets and stores. We'll have people, uh, we know that some people even export this uh, because everywhere you travel through these days uh, you find out that people don't want to miss home too much. So Ofada rice is on the shelves because ultimately our target is Ofada. But Ofada has a longer gestation period. Today we're planting Erika 8 which uh, fruits in three months but Ofada is five months each. So we're going to have two cycles every year and like I said the factory will be located right here as well so that it's whole, the whole value chain, the entire thing takes place here. Apart from Egwa in Yewa North local government area, other places that will benefit from these rice enclaves include The special advisor to the governor on agriculture speaks on the benefit of this project. What we have done is we have empowered them. We have what we did is we came in and we cleared the land because they've had serious problem in land clearing. It's something they have not been able to afford and that makes sense. By doing this now, we are working with them in cooperatives, the people who are specialists in rice planting. We have taken their names, we have given them the lands, so we're empowering them. And by doing that, we are creating wealth for them. And we plan to continue doing this endlessly. Another boost for the RISE project is the provision of irrigation facilities. The process for this has already begun, as the farmers used to complain about the seasonal rainfall and its effects on their crops. The rice has been planted and it is already growing. Hopefully, by the end of December, it will be ready for harvest. Well, we're also at a stage now where we need additional water and luckily, uh, the source from which we're getting water for the irrigation for that particular site. Um, even though it's not the way we want it, but has come on stream, so we're able to now distribute the water within the 20 hectares as we need it. The Ministry of Agriculture has also commenced the construction of greenhouses for the production of tomatoes in the state. This first trial was at the Ogun State Agricultural Development Program, OGADA. Based on its success, the government has prepared land for the commencement of 15 more greenhouses at Abeokuta. Presently, the first five have been completed. The next batch of five is ongoing and will continue until the 15 greenhouses are completed. Young people who will manage these greenhouses have been interviewed and will be trained. We're doing tomatoes and peppers. We did. Um uh, we did a pilot scheme using the greenhouse technology. Uh, the results were astounding. We were very impressed. We took our produce to the governor and immediately encouraged us to roll it out. So our first phase, which is um, 15, we're rolling out in the central. That's in Kotoku, here in Abeokuta. As I speak to you, Dizengov should be on ground this morning because the participants already commenced training about two weeks ago. So this morning they're going to be on site to learn how to install the tents. The installation should last um, maybe about 10 days. Um, cultivation cycle is from the tomato start fruiting four months, from four months, and then the fruit steadily for another period of six months. So it's a cycle of 10 months in each case. So these are things that we're working on, but it won't be just tomatoes. We're also doing, um, we know it as tatashi, but it's actually traditionally green. It only ripens. That green one, a lot of hotels and um, restaurants, they use it and they don't have enough quantities. So we're also culturing the green, the huge green peppers. One project embarked upon by the state government since its inception is the construction of farm settlements across the three senatorial districts of the state. 
The pilot phase started with the Owowo farm settlement, which is nearing the final stages of completion. This is Owowo model farm estate. Uh, we started work on this um, late 2011. Um, as you can see, the buildings are all concluded and all. We've moved in our birds. Um, the fish uh, tanks are also ready. And we're also concluding work on the list of um, residents. Uh, so we've just come to see our own state of preparedness and readiness. That's why we're here today. Uh, and again, I'm happy with what I've seen. The birds are already in. They're settling in. They've already started laying their eggs, as you've seen. The benefit of the Owo farm settlement goes beyond the immediate employment of youth and the development of agriculture in the state. As the pilot farm settlement, there is going to be room for expansion as well as development of modern agricultural technologies. One thing that is still delaying the official launch of the farm settlement is the provision of electricity. But this is being tackled by the state government. Electricity is still a bit of a challenge for us, but we've been talking to um, a group of um, uh, service providers in this regard. They've come in here with us today. They've gone to see the stream that we have that is very close by to see if we can do a mini hydro dam or uh, use solar to power the space again to drive down costs. Because whichever way you look at it, electricity hardly stable these days and if we say okay we'll buy a generator uh, again the associated costs buying fuel to power it and what have you servicing regularly um, so we think if we have something that's more stable in the form of uh, uh, a natural source of electricity like I said either from from the stream that is nearby or using the sun uh, we think it's more long-lasting and more stable so that's one one consideration that we have and Solar Electric Gates of the United Kingdom is providing electricity for the farm settlement. The managing director speaks on the option being considered and its benefits. The solar power here is, uh, uh, the opportunities are huge. You know, we make these systems work in the UK. We get 50% less sunlight than you get here. The sun is a fantastic commodity that you're wasting in effect at the moment. So I, you know, as far as we're concerned, uh, t to have the same system for a house here should cost half as much money because you have twice as much sunshine. Already the poultry section of this farm has commenced and is being managed by the Department of Livestock of the Ministry of Agriculture. Furthermore, turkey birds are presently being reared at the Kotoko Livestock Farm in preparation for the Yuletide season. The Livestock Department has also prepared 2,700 pullets for purchase by interested farmers at the poultry in Ijegugu. This will go a long way in meeting the needs of the people over time. Another beautiful project embarked upon by the Ministry of Agriculture in recent times in the state is the construction of a farmer's market at Ashero in Abeokuta. Since the Ministry has embarked upon a lot of production of various produce, it is only logical to have a market for these products. The key aim is to minimize wastages. We've realized that over time when our farmers, especially our fish farmers, after sales each day, they have nowhere to store what is left and their only choice is to take their fish to the kilns and have them smoked. Uh, not a lot of people like smoked fish. Uh, a lot of people like fresh fish and they enjoy it. Uh, that's one. We realize that, so our aim is when we bring this here, first we'll enjoy a lot more patronage and secondly we eliminate middlemen. These people are able to sell their fishes at more competitive rates because there'll be skills. They'll put them on skills and people can see what they're buying. Um, secondly, we're engaging in a lot of uh, production at the moment. Rice, tomatoes, this will be an outlet for those things to be sold. And it is not only fish being produced from our own fish farms in Odeda Ilaro that we'll bring here. It would also be fish from different fish farmers who are interested in coming to showcase their products here. The laying of the foundation stone was done by the Commissioner for Agriculture on the 24th of October 2013. The Ministry has also continued to partner with various bodies in the development of agriculture in the state, including the training of farmers. Towards this end, a workshop was organized by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture 
collaboration with the State Ministry of Agriculture and the National Cotton Farmers Association on the 30th of October 2013 with the theme Producing Long Stable Cotton to Improve Nigerian Cotton Export for the Benefit of Our Economy. One of the presentations dwelt on pest diseases and control measures. This is to help farmers in the southwest have better yields from their farms. In all, the objective of the present administration is that the whole value chain in the agricultural sector will be maximized and everyone would be the better for it. The ultimate goal of the present administration in Ogun State is to ensure that farmers, industrialists and other residents benefit from the vast land resource, cash crops, food crops and livestock that the state can produce. As such, a lot of attention has been paid to this all-important sector. The result of this is appreciation of the government, which is making this not just a possibility, but a reality. Cotton farmers who attended the workshop speak on this and what more needs to be done for them. All these cotton farmers, we cannot meet the production of this uh, world market because they are expecting Nigeria to give uh, about uh, maybe 20 uh, billion tons of this uh, particular uh, cotton to them. So, uh, but what I will encourage the government to do is that in all schools, uh, maybe in some schools that are in remote area, maybe if they have land, they should give them loan, so to establish this thing, and even training on this cutting production up to the finishing uh, product. Before the discovery of oil, Cotton happens to be the largest employer of labor. And when we discover oil, we kill cotton. So it's high time we go back into it. Because from cotton, you have a lot of industries like ginning, spinning, oil industry, soap industry.